The following is a presentation of Learfield IMG College. This is the Chris Ash Show. Your chance to talk with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights on the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Tonight's show is brought to you by... To be a part of the show, give us a call at 1-877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Here's your host, Chris Carlin. Welcome once again, everybody, to this week's edition. It's week four of the Chris Ash Show, and we are in a brand new, gorgeous location, the Rutgers Club, right on the Livingston campus. It is an absolutely beautiful setup, and we encourage one and all to come out to the show each and every week. We'll be here for the rest of the season. Very excited for that. Of course, my co-host is Eric Legrand. Eric, how are you? Doing awesome. This place is amazing. This is fantastic. fantastic. I like it a lot. And Coach, we have certainly stepped it up a little bit this week. This is a beautiful venue. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys, too. Excited to be back here with uh, people to be able to join our uh, show. Uh, thank you guys that have come out. Uh, this is a great setting, and uh, looking forward for the rest of the uh, season here um, in the Rutgers Club. Well, our, telev- our telephone number is 877-384-1869. For your questions for the coach, you can tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio as well. We will answer them uh, throughout the course of the evening. Uh, we are on our vision on scarletknights.com, on the Scarlet Knights app, and on 1450 WCTC. No Facebook this week. Hopefully, we'll be back on Facebook next week. Scarlet Knights getting ready for Michigan this Saturday up in Ann Arbor. Uh, another Big Ten contest, their second of the season, and second to, on the road to open the season in conference play. They're coming off the 30-16 to 16 loss to Boston College this past week at SHI Stadium. So, Coach, when you went back through the tape, what did you see? Well, obviously disappointed with the outcome of the game. You know, uh, again, we just kind of beat ourselves. We missed some opportunities, but really encouraged uh, with some of the things I saw also, uh, specifically Art Sitkowski and the quarterback, um, our ability to move the ball uh, throughout the course of the game. You know, what we have to do, though, is play cleaner. We can't beat ourselves or stall out the drives with penalties like we did. We've got to finish drives and get touchdowns instead of field goals when we have the opportunity. And uh, probably the most discouraging thing is we had some opportunities to score some points, and uh, we just didn't take advantage of the plays that were there. So, you know, kind of both sides of the fence. So ultimately, uh, we wanted to win. Um, we wanted to play cleaner football, um, and uh, we needed to do that to have a chance to win the game. We did not, uh, but we're back at it and on to the next one and uh, really encouraged to build on the things that we saw uh, that we did well last week. And, hey Coach, you've been talking about how hard Art has been working, and we all know how hard he works. So for him to go out there and have a game like that and – it looked like it looked like he's been so doing it his whole life back there. Like it was no like no problem at all. Reading the defense, seeing guys one on one matches as he's got Raheem Blackshaw out the backfield on that third down play. Coach, can you talk about just how he's been able to prepare himself to have a game like he did and one that he needed? Yeah, he, he did. Um, I think it did wonders for his confidence. We'll see as we go forward. But you know, I've, I've seen a different art here um, throughout training camp in the last couple of weeks of the season when he was behind McLean. Um, and he was prepared for the moment last Saturday, and he took full advantage of it. Uh, he played a very good game, didn't play a perfect game, but he played a very good game and uh, excited to see him build on it. But he has just put in so much work from last season. You know, uh, last season wasn't great for him uh, uh, personally. It wasn't great for the team, but for him personally, it was very, very difficult as a true freshman. Uh, he learned a lot, and he took those lessons and applied them here in the offseason. And between him and the receivers and, and uh, the offensive staff, uh, they really put in a lot of time, and uh, Art's, uh, I think what you saw last Saturday, Art's improvement is, is pretty drastic from when he started his last game last year against Penn State to this one. Uh, but now it's time to step it up and continue to, to move forward, and I'm just so happy for him. He's not a finished product yet, but uh, I really like where he's going. It was his first career 300-yard passing game. Do you feel like the first game and a half being on the bench, watching it from a different perspective, may have benefited him a little bit? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, when we go back through training camp and when we made the decision to go with McLean, 
Uh, Art just wasn't ready yet. You know, McLean uh, was better. McLean uh, was ahead. He's a fifth-year senior. You know, there are just a lot of things that he was more comfortable with. And Art needed that little extra time. Um, and McLean did a great job helping him uh, as well. And, uh, you know, he took full advantage of it. And uh, he went out there when he got his opportunity and applied it. And he just got to keep going. I want you actually to take us through that play where Raheem Blackshear was in a backfield and he slipped out right on the linebacker one-on-one -on -one and was able to catch it. You saw what the rest he did. But can you take us through, I guess, the concept of that play? You saw how it looked like the wide receivers cleared everyone out and it was just one-on-one -on -one with him in the middle of the field. Well, it, you know, it's like anything else. We kind of caught them in a perfect storm. You know, they were in an all-out blitz and peel uh, on the back. And uh, Raheem did a great job of shaking free from the guy that was trying to cover him, who was trying to blitz and then uh, engage him and cover him. And uh, Art saw it, he, uh, and um, you know, uh, Raheem got down the seam, and Art put a perfect uh, throw on him, and Raheem did the rest. And uh, his open field running really showed up uh, down the field. Uh, he really made a couple guys miss to take it all the way. But it was a really well-executed play offensively uh, against that call uh, from Boston College's defense. And uh, anytime you can get the ball out in that much space to, to Raheem, he's going to have a chance to do some damage, and he did. Our telephone number again for the coach, 877-384-1869. Tweet your questions. We've got a couple already at Rutgers Radio. Um, the 18-play drive to the outsider uh, that, that BC had, um, it, it's one of those drives where they just physically were able to do some things, were able to uh, obviously run the football effectively and get some first downs when they needed to. Um, the effect that that had uh, on your team at that point? Well, it was obviously a, a, a tipping point in the game. You know, well, I think we were down by eight at the, at the time. And uh, really, third down is what killed us. Uh, there were every down that we didn't get them in, in enough third and long situations. We did get them in one third and eight, and they ran a quarterback draw. We had a perfect call. Um, and he got out, uh, unfortunately, got the first down. But uh, our inability to get off the field uh, on third down is what killed us in that drive. And, um, it really wasn't necessarily with Boston College. We misfit a couple runs. They, you know, as you went through the course of the game, we were doing a, a pretty decent job against the run uh, uh, up to that point. And at that point, they went to a couple different plays that we hadn't necessarily seen. Uh, and we struggled to get it adjusted and get it cleaned up and fixed uh, during the course of the drive. And they took full advantage of it. But it was really a third down that killed us. And that drive uh, really hurt us in the game. And that fourth one play, too, as well, Coach, when it came up, I believe that was the 15th play of the drive. I Defense is a little bit windy right there. Were you thinking about him? Should I take a time out? You kind of felt good leaving the guys out there trying to convert on that fourth and one play. I well, I mean, you, you, play. yeah, I mean, you always got to have a feel for, um, you know, the, the team. And uh, I always uh, am thinking about uh, that situation that you mentioned, taking a timeout to get an extra breather. But uh, at that moment, we need to try to save the timeouts for the offense. Uh, we had to use a timeout earlier in the uh, second half, uh, which was disappointing. Uh, and we had two left, and we wanted to try to save them for our offense. Coach, on the defensive side, Tyshawn Fogg, 15 tackles uh, in the middle of this defense now. And, and we have talked about development. He is a guy that you've really seen an awful lot of development from the last couple of years. And, and now he looks the part, looks every bit of the part. Yeah, uh, Tyshawn's really done a nice job of uh, both mentally and physically developing himself to become uh, our starting middle linebacker. Um, I think he's played uh, pretty well here in the first uh, three games, and we need to continue to improve his play, but uh, I think he's off to a good start. He's very active. He's around the ball a lot, and he's making a lot of plays, and uh, we need to continue to do that. And when you're in a game like that, Coach, that was it's a big boy, A.J. Dillon, running the ball up, up and down the field all like that all game long. They handed him the ball over 20 times. How do you deal with, I guess, recovering the guys from such a physical game like that? And you got to back, get right back into it, I know, for game planning for Michigan, but how do you recover to guys? Because that was, like I said, so it's a pounding game right there and versus Boston College. You know what they want to do with the ball running all the time. Yeah, you know, you, you, from, from here on out, really the rest of our schedules are going to be physical games like that. And the guys have gotten into a routine. The older guys that have been around, played a lot. They understand it. They know what, what their body's going to go through. Uh, they know what they have to do to get themselves back. So there's no preset routine that we give them. We give them a lot of different options. And it's really based on their needs. Um, some guys that are playing in the trenches obviously get beat up a little bit more than guys that are out on the perimeter. But uh, most of the guys have a really good routine that they believe in, they feel good with, and they go through it every weekend to get themselves back and ready to go for the next week. And listen, your special teams continues to excel. Uh, Justin Davidovitz, three field goals, a 50-yarder, looks about as comfortable as can be. And then there's that guy again, Adam Korsak. <laughs> Uh, the second time this season he has been named Rake Guy Punter of the Week. And it's staggering what he's able to do 
And the statistic, I think, of the season so far uh, is that 12 of his 16 punts have been placed inside the 20-yard line. I mean, that 75% of his punts are inside the 20. That's, that's staggering. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive, and um, he's just uh, Mr. Steady. He's, he's consistent. He's disciplined. You, know, you always know what you're going to get out of Adam. Uh, we work those situations a lot because that's what comes up the most in, in the punt game um, are those uh, pooch situations, and uh, he's excelled at them. And it's not just him, though. I don't want to lose sight of, of the play of our gunners as well yep. uh, because to uh, be able to snap, punt, uh, get, drop the ball in the right location and have guys down there that can actually down it and understand that, um, uh, all those pieces have to work together. And uh, Adam's obviously a, a big part of that, but those gunners do a great job. And, again, we work that a lot, and uh, I really like what we're doing right now in the punt game. It, 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 that, that unit has a chance to uh, change the game, uh, the field position, and we've got to do a better job as a team uh, taking advantage of it. Best, I mean, the, just to the gunners' credit, uh, Adam mentioned him last week, and now uh, best, I believe, in the Big Ten in net punting average right now at over 44 yards. Yeah, well, if you look back to where we were uh, our first year, I think we were last in the league, and we went from uh, worst to first. So uh, we want to keep that up. And, um, again, all those guys take a lot of pride in that unit and uh, really excited about uh, the award for uh, Adam again for a second week. But it's really a, a unit award. I want to talk about bouncing back now from a mistake. Lance Stevenson earlier in the game had to run into, run into the, um, the returner on the punt play. But then on a big kickoff, he made a big play. Inside that. So you talk about a little bit bouncing back and keeping the confidence of those guys when, you know, they do make a big mistake, but being able to come back for it and make a big play. Yeah, you know, he had the, uh, the catch uh, interference call there. And, uh, you know, we had one actually uh, in the previous week against Iowa, uh, against them, that they threw the flag and they picked it up. It was really almost an identical situation. Um, you know, Larry tried to, to sidestep uh, the returner and they, they called it. Uh, but to his credit, uh, he didn't get rattled. He was disappointed uh, that he had hurt the team in field position at that moment, but he came back and made a big play later. And that's really what we talked to the guys about, you know, your response to uh, negative situations, and Larry was a perfect example of that. We'll take our first time out of the night. We'll come back. We'll talk more with the coach as the Scarlet Knights prepare for Michigan at the Big House this coming weekend, 877-384-1869. Your questions for the coach are coming up at Rutgers Radio. We are live at the beautiful Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus from Learfield IMG College. This is the Chris Ash Show. His camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve. By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council.
SHI helps companies select, deploy, and manage cutting-edge technology. Find out how by visiting SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. We have returned to the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus of Rutgers University for the Chris Ash Show. Week four, Scarlet Knights getting ready for the University of Michigan up in Ann Arbor. Our special guest a little bit later is an interesting young man to say the least, and that is Cole Murphy, the holder for the Scarlet Knights. And just to give you a, a sense of Cole and what you're in for, I was looking at his Twitter earlier, and his Twitter profile says, unverified public figure who happens to dabble in Division I football at <laughs> Rutgers University. Uh, oh, man. You know, I, Coach, we, I, those guys, at the very least, those three in particular and the guys they're with, Billy Taylor, Cole, Justin, seem to have an awful lot of fun and, and enjoy themselves in a lot of different ways, bring a lot of personality as well. I'm sure you saw their little electric celebration uh, with him trying to plug in the charger in the wall. <laughs> Uh, you know, I heard about it. I, I didn't see it. You haven't uh, seen it yet? Uh, okay. I, I, I saw it live. Coach, it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. Do you uh, want to see it? I really don't. No. <laughs> I just let them do their thing. Uh, they show up and, and um, they do what they're supposed to do, and, and that's all I'm concerned about. Uh, they have a lot of fun, but uh, they do their job, and that, that's the most important thing. And uh, they're doing it very well. So I'm excited uh, for them, and uh, y you guys are going to have a treat with Cole. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, Coach, I would ask you, what do you deal with the specialists, too? And as you said, they're off doing their own thing. But how do you try to put them in pressure moments and pressure situations throughout camp and throughout the season, too, just to keep them on their toes for when they get called in the game? Yeah, uh, throughout the training camp, uh, we do some different situations. Um, and a lot of times I don't tell anybody that we're going to do them. And they just have to be on guard on particular days. And they do a great job of that. Um, but uh, I'll, be, I'll tell, be honest with you, my uh, coaching of them is just leaving them alone. And uh, I, I don't want to screw them up. Um, I'm not a kicking uh, expert uh, in terms of their techniques and fundamentals. I know the ball's got to go through the uprights and where we want it on punts and kickoffs, and that's about it. Other than that, I'm going to let them be coached by some experts, and uh, I'll leave them alone. So as you prepare now for the Wolverines, what have been the focal points in practice this week? Uh, as you know, we, we know you work towards getting better each week, but uh, as you've gotten ready for this game, what have been your things that you paid particular attention to? Uh, you know, we, we've had a lot of conversations uh, about just uh, improving our performance. And uh, there's a, there are a few things that we're really trying to focus on to get that done. Uh, the, the, it all starts just the theme around not beat yourself. And, and that sounds uh, easy. It, it's really hard to do. Um, and a lot of it just comes down to discipline and consistency. Um, you know, nobody is out there trying to, you know, have a false start, a holding penalty, uh, you know, kick catch interference. You know, nobody's trying to do those things. Um, but if we can do it right one play, we, we need to be able to do it right uh, consistently throughout a game uh, where we don't beat ourselves. And that's really the focus is uh, continue to, to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is improvement uh, each week and uh, becoming more disciplined and consistent uh, with our fundamentals uh, and uh, execution of, of what we're being asked to do. And you know, that's really what we're trying to do. And right now, uh, strain to finish is another big theme. Um, you know, we want to play with relentless effort, but strain to finish is really, really important. You know, I look at last uh, uh, Saturday's game. If we would have strained to finish a rep, we might have uh, gotten a few more yards, another first down, a touchdown. If we could have strained to finish a drive, finish the game, uh, that's really what we're trying to get done. I remember Coach last week you were talking about being aggressive. And this week I made sure I watched Damon Hayes play corner. And wow, Coach, he was up in the wide receivers, jamming them at the line of scrimmage, making sure that they weren't getting off the line. Can you talk a little bit about that technique? Because he was definitely disrupted the ways that they were trying to run some of their routes. Yeah, Damon's a very uh, physical and confident corner. Um, he really uh, embraces what we ask him to do from a coverage standpoint with his press technique. You know, the week before, he uh, had gotten a few flags uh, against Iowa. And um, I think I've mentioned before, uh, there's some I'm okay with, some I'm not. Um, some of the ones that he has that are aggressive uh, penalties, uh, that's the style of play that I want our players to have, and that's what he has. And uh, I'm not going to get too upset about that. Uh, and I think this last Saturday he played a aggress an aggressive game, but it was a clean game. And, um, you know, he's got to continue to do that as we go forward. But uh, he's a guy that we're going to rely on to go out and lock guys up, and uh, he embraces that challenge. Uh, kind of assess the, the secondary as a whole for us. You know, Malik Dixon has slid in uh, to a starting position this year. Jarek Paul has slid in uh, to a starting position this year. How have you evaluated them through the first three weeks of the year? Well, just the secondary uh, as a whole is kind of uh, what I just talked about, being uh, consistent and disciplined. 
and uh, that, those are the two things that we have to do to uh, improve. Um, I think we have a chance to be an outstanding secondary, both in uh, the pass game as well as the, the run game. Uh, but we were not consistent last Saturday. We gave up a big run um, in the first uh, uh, opening drive in the first quarter um, that uh, we just weren't consistent. They, they were aligned in that formation and play several times later in the game, and we stuffed it. But uh, the one time we let it out was a big play. And, uh, that, that wasn't on the D line, it wasn't on the linebackers, it was on the secondary. And uh, secondary's, uh, you know, fits and role in, in the run defense is so important. And, and our guys do embrace it, but we've got to be more consistent with it. And then uh, discipline uh, with our eyes and, and with our technique. As you just mentioned, the D line, last week you mentioned how well they actually played versus Iowa. Same kind of almost style of offense with the just pounding the ball up the field with Boston College. How did you assess when you looked at the tape on how the defensive line played this week? Uh, again, I'll, I'll use the two words, uh, c consistent and discipline, uh, are things that we have to continue to improve on. Uh, I thought there were a lot of snaps that our D-line played really good. Um, and I get it when, when uh, you give up that number of rush yards, everyone automatically looks at the D-line. It's not the, you know, the D-line's sole uh, job. They're, they were pretty stout at the point of attack for the most part. You know, we've got to fit right from the second and third levels of the defense uh, and be physical and violent uh, with, with those players, um, just like the, we, we asked a D-line to, uh, to do. Um, but I think we're playing uh, a lot of guys. We've got more depth than what we've had. Uh, the one area that uh, I am concerned about that we've got to improve is our pass rush. Uh, but uh, we, we've got to do a better job on first and second down to get teams into third and long so we can rush the passer. And, um, you know, they're, they're working extremely hard. And, again, I think we're deeper than what we've been. Uh, we, we still have to have guys that are consistent and disciplined uh, to stay in their gaps and hold the point. Uh, first question in on Twitter. Uh, Coach, this is from J.K. Lee. 78, what would you say have been some of the bigger challenges in building and developing this team for the Big Ten Conference that fans typically wouldn't see? Well, you know, I, I, I've, I've said this before, and, and, and I'll stand on the table and still say this uh, with conviction. Uh, this has uh, the chance to be the best team that we've had since I've been here. Um, what does that mean? Nothing. You know, we've got to go perform that way. Um, and right now, what we have to stop doing is beating ourselves. More games are lost than they are won, and that's the biggest challenge right now is to get our guys to play uh, consistently uh, with the right effort, the right fundamentals, and, and be disciplined in situations um, because our margin for error is not very big. It's a small margin for error, and um, you know, we, we've got to understand that and, and execute that way uh, with great detail. And th Those are the challenges. It's not just one thing um, to say, well, this, this is the biggest one. There's a number of them. Um, and uh, we're just going to keep pecking away and chipping away at, at each one and, and, until they're uh, better. Our telephone number once again, 877-384-1869, 877-384-1869. On the defensive line, when you look at uh, wanting to get a better pass rush, wanting to be more consistent, is it a, a case of winning individual matchups? Is it a case of, well, maybe we should try some different things uh, in terms of blitzes, that kind of thing? How do you go about changing, not changing, but improving it mid-year as a coach? Yeah, well, there's a combination of things. You know, the last uh, two games that we've played, it's a different style of offense. They're a run-first uh, offense. They, they pack it in. Uh, they're really good at play action. Those offenses are uh, difficult to get a pass rush unless you get them in third down. And uh, that's just the style that they play with. And if you look at their stats, um, you know, offensively, both those teams, they've done a pretty good job of, of keeping the quarterback clean. Yep. And... Um, Again, you get them in third and long, and, and then you can get into some different packages and, and different pressures uh, you know, for the pass that uh, you know, can help increase your production, and that's really what we need to do. You know, Coach, uh, doing some of the prep earlier today for the game this coming week, there's a stat that fans probably aren't even familiar with uh, for this season, and it is the job that your offense has done in preventing plays of loss. Uh, they are tops in the Big Ten in allowing just 2.67 tackles for loss this season. And again, continue to do a good job in terms of the pass protection. The sack numbers, I believe, are only a two for the entire season thus far. So is it as simple as the offensive line continuing to play better? And also just the fact that you have, I mean, Eric, one play that you pointed out right away uh, the other day, just Raheem Blackshear in pass protection uh, at times is absolutely fantastic. Your, your guys the, and the running backs being able to be better at it. Yeah, there, there are a number of um, contributing factors to uh, those stats that you mentioned. And uh, there's not just one individual or, or uh, 
you know, one part of it, uh, it it's one, it starts with what we're uh, trying to do offensively. Um, we want to be able to limit the number of negative plays uh, that we have because uh, every drive you have a negative play or a penalty, uh, it decreases your chances of scoring. And uh, we want to be able to um, limit those. And we, in the pass game uh, and with our protection, first and foremost, it's all about what can we protect and what can the quarterback throw. And we've made the necessary adjustments to make sure we can protect the quarterback better, keep him clean, not only from sacks, but just getting hit overall. And then he can uh, successfully uh, complete some of the, the concepts that we're asking him uh, to throw. But I think the, the other part in the run game is uh, our backs are doing a great job of, you know, breaking uh, first contact, getting through first contact, if it, even if it is behind the line and trying to make something out of nothing. Uh, I think uh, Pacheco and, and Blackshear both have had some good examples this year of getting that done. And Isaiah last year, eight total yards of loss on his runs. I mean, that's, that's a fantastic statistic. Yeah, it, 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 because he's a physical runner. Um, he's got great leg drive. He runs behind his pads. Uh, it's really hard to get him down on first contact, especially if you take him up high because he's a pretty big back. But he just runs really, really hard. And uh, th those things contribute to those stats. I know we talked about uh, earlier about the passing game and now the running game. I want to go to the tricks and gadgets, Coach. We still have to see Bo Melton get the little trick and gadget play. We got to see what he was able to do to, with the ball. Are we going to be able to see the ball get in his hands some more? Because he has some dangerous talent once it gets in his hands. Yeah, he's got really good speed. Um, I think early in the game we, we tried a, a, a gadget play, uh, a throwback, um, that unfortunately yeah. I think it would have walked in the end zone. Um, Raheem happened to run into a D lineman and got knocked down. And um, he was the intended receiver, and, and it, it didn't work out. Uh, but, um, you know, that's a play that was there. Uh, we just we didn't capitalize on it. Uh, there was nobody around, and uh, if we would have been able to make that one happen, he would have walked in, and, uh, you know, things would have, you know, would have, could have, should have been different, but uh, it is what it is. But uh, to, to answer your question about Bo Melton, you know, we are constantly having conversations about different ways that we can get the ball in his hands because of the speed that he does have. He's averaging 21 yards a catch this season, and that's good for fifth in the Big Ten. And he's also uh, on the, had the 21-yard rush on that reverse. That was a career long as well. All right, Coach, we're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we will welcome in Rutgers' hopeful holder of the year, the Mortel Award. That is Cole Murphy who is joining us momentarily. And we'll have Coach back a little bit later to preview more of the Michigan game. Stay with us live from the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus from Learfield IMG College. This is the Chris Ash Show. Managing your health care can sometimes feel overwhelming. With the new Horizon Blue app from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, you get the care and support you want right in your hands. Now you can have all of your health care coverage details and access to support at your fingertips. Get help scheduling appointments, find doctors and specialists, access your coverage details, get updates on your claims, See easy to understand cost details and get support straight from the experts at Horizon. You can even see a doctor wherever it's most convenient for you via your smartphone or tablet. Downloading the app is easy and free. Text get app to 422 271 today or find it in the App Store or Google Play. There is no charge to download the Horizon Blue app, but rates from your wireless provider may apply. The Horizon Blue app. It's not just an app, it's your direct connection to care. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Today, millions of people all across America are building a life in recovery from addiction and mental illness, helping themselves and helping each other with friends, family, and community lending their strength and support. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders, for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council.
We have returned to the Chris Ash Show here at the Rutgers Club on Livingston Campus at Rutgers University. I wanted to remind everybody, coming up on October the 28th, it is the seventh annual evening with Eric Legrand, presented by New Roads Financial Group. Jason Newcomb and Ron Garuti Jr. put this event together every year, and they do a fantastic job in doing that. And it's a fundraiser for Team Legrand, uh, the Christopher, Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And, uh, you know, Eric, we have so much fun at this event every year. Uh, this year, it's on October 28th. Looking forward to it very much. Yeah, seventh year going, you know. When they started this, Jason and Ron just started that, wanted to do a one-time thing to make a nice event for Team LeGrand. And it was such a success. I remember Ron coming up to me and said, you want to do this again next year? I'm like, absolutely. And to, it's now going on our seventh year is absolutely insane. And I'll, I'll keep on harping on it. In 2017, they were the ones who put us over that $1 million raise for spinal cord injury research for Team LeGrand, and we're just going to keep on growing until we get to that $2 million and find a cure for this paralysis. And this is what it's all about, Rutgers community, sharing that word and living by that word, our family. So can't thank them enough each year for doing this. It's going to be a lot of fun again this year. So They do a great out. job. So many, so many great auction items that are available. Uh, for your information, if you want to call, you want to get information on tickets, all that, seats are limited. It's at Fiddler's Elbow Country Club at Bench, uh, Bedminster. And telephone number 908-730-6346, 908-730-6346, October the 28th, an evening with Eric Legrand, presented by New Roads Financial. Well, if you haven't seen the hashtag, it is taking over Twitter, hashtag angelic holds. <laughs> he is Cole Murphy, the future winner of the Mortel Award, which began a few years ago. He is officially on the Mortel Award preseason watch list. The Peter Mortel Award was started a few years ago by Peter Mortel, the punter and holder at Minnesota. And we're going to let Cole tell you a little bit about it. But he is Cole Murphy, who joins us right now, Mr. Angelic Holds himself. <laughs> How are you, Cole? I'm doing well. You know, this is exciting. Here, you got to come right up here to the mic. Get up, right. get right up there. Right. Yeah, I know holding like... is your thing, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, uh... No, it's exciting. The, uh, the award came about five years ago. Well, it's going on its fifth year in... Uh... Pete Mortel kind of came up with it, and I think, you know, at first he didn't, maybe he didn't know he was going to pick up this much momentum, and now, you know, people are putting in submissions left and right. There's even a, a, a lower division Pete Mortel Award, not Pete Mortel Award, but similar. And uh, they, Do they call that one the not Pete Mortel Award? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The, the account followed me, and I, I don't know exactly who's running it, but... Um, it hasn't quite caught the momentum that Pete Mortel has yet. But. Well, the first thing we should do is tell everybody out there to follow at Mortel Award sure. and to start campaigning for Cole Murphy. So yeah, here's the deal. I got to get on that, Chris. I'm going to yeah. get on to some at Mortel, uh, at Mortel, M-O-R-T-E-L-L, -L, Award on Twitter. It's H-O-T-Y. Uh, Hoti, and as you pointed yeah. out on your Twitter, not Hottie. Yeah. Hoti. Hoti. Yeah, my mom was kind of, it looked weird every time I was going through the Scarlet Walk, and my mom and my dad are calling me Hottie all the time. And <laughs> well, that's was, awkward. Yeah. yeah. I had to tell her, you know, mom, you got to relax a little bit. It's just Hoti. So I put it out there for everybody because, you know, a lot of parents might not know. Well, but the, the, the great thing about this is it was started as kind of a parody award right. by Pete Mortel. So he sends in this video to ESPN congratulating himself on winning the Peter Mortel Award <laughs> right. for Holder of the Year in College Football. And he raised $30,000 for the University of Minnesota Children's Hospital in, in the midst of doing this. And ESPN played the video and made a big deal about it. And, yeah. and, and it, it's really become a thing. And every year, the, the Holder of the Year picks his charity to raise money for it, and it's just really turned into something that's funny and fantastic at the same time. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity because of the fact that once you get enough eyes on you, you can start to get that momentum of raising the money, and then, uh, you know, you put it towards a good cause. I know Mac Loudermilk, who won it last year from UCF, put it towards uh, Locks of Love, and he actually cut off that mane that he had, so. <laughs> I want to ask you a little bit about the celebration now. I've seen yeah. you with the bit of it. I'm watching it live. I'm calling a game with Chris on the radio and Ray Lucas, and I see you start shocking me. So I start laughing as we're about to go to break, and I'm like, he just put a charge, like, like he's put a charge in a wall and got electrocuted. Where, where does this stuff come from? Because, like Coach says, he leaves you guys off, to, off on your own. So 
Tell us about those moments and where you're coming up with this type of stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, as you know, the, the specialists kind of have their own section over there <laughs> on field three, so nobody's really monitoring you. You can come up with a bunch of different games um, and celebrations. So we're coming up with anything that will really catch anybody's attention. you got to be precise, <laughs> though, and have it to where the celebration is long enough to where people notice, but not long enough to where, you know, Chris Ash is The gonna, coach notices. <laughs> come down they get a flag. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. He said he has not seen it yet and That's good. really doesn't so it's want working. to. It's yes, working. exactly. So as long as social media is seeing it. You know. Exactly. Perfect. Um, I saw it live, so I will say yeah, I like yeah. it. That was fantastic. And, and the guy that, you know, so we've talked to Justin before. We've talked to Corsac last week, who's now the, the two-time um, Ray Guy punter of the week. And the guy we haven't talked to yet is Billy Taylor. Mm -hmm. it just, it just tell us about Billy and as the long snapper in this operation, you know, what is his role in your group? I, we, we know his role is to deliver the snaps. Yeah. We understand that. But, like, this is an offbeat group. So if you're <laughs> describing each guy, what is their role in your specialist group over on field three? Yeah, so I would say that, uh, you know, just in terms of the field goal unit, Billy is just like a machine. Um, he throws it back every time. Laces are going to be out every time. I have to do little to no work. Um, so I'm taking a little bit, maybe too much credit for what he's already putting back there. And then Justin is just so fluent. I, it's not even a matter of worrying if it's going to go through the uprights now. So I, I kind of, as I was joking and we were getting more confident with all the training that we do, I just say that I'm kind of like a, a special teams mediator. I just put it there and make sure that uh, nothing else happens in between. Well, let's talk, let, let's talk about that because I tried holding back in Pop Warner. Yeah. Imagine Pop Warner football. I did get my hand kicked, my finger kicked a few times. And I didn't like it. I did it. So can you talk a little bit about that, I guess, and tell us how have, have the trust in the kicker and how have you ever got a funny story of when you got your finger kicked? Oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, so with Justin, you know, I, I wasn't sure exactly how he wanted me to hold it at first. I didn't know if he wanted, you know, a slight tilt. Some people like it towards them, away from them. It's like a, a miniature science in it. And you got to do it in that, that time that's less than 1.3 seconds, and that's what people don't tend to realize. But um, when I was actually starting to transition and work with Guy Fava, who's a, who's a lefty kicker, um, I was trying to spin the laces for him, and he freaking blew up my hand when I was spinning it. And so it looked like, it just sounded like somebody kicked a, a wall. And uh, it didn't really hurt or anything, but, but it was a, that was a good transition period. I've, I've gotten better with Guy, so. All right. Um I was going through your Twitter. Yeah. I want to read some of your tweets. Okay. <laughs> Nothing that will get you in trouble. Right. Uh, but just to give you a sense of, of your personality, uh, this is from September the 5th. Okay. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 holds, but I fear the man who has practiced the same hold 10,000 times. It's true. Is what Bruce Lee said, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Care to explain? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that week going into it, we, we get a bunch of inspirational quotes that are kind of, you know, to, meant to pump you up throughout. And uh, we had that Bruce Lee quote, and it was about kicking. So not, not the man that's had 10,000 kicks, but the man that has practiced 10,000 of the same. Well, if it's about kicking, I mean, so, yeah. It, I mean, it, I thought it went hand in hand. And uh, I, I will say that working with a specialist every day, I get an ample amount of time just to literally practice. We've got variation holding things where they just try to throw me the most insane types of, of snaps, and I just have to put them down. So, And as Chris knows, I, I, I like to ask this to all of our guests that come on here. Who are you hanging out with out of football, and where are you going to eat? That's yeah. the main part. Where are you guys going to eat? Yeah, so uh, outside of football, I got a pretty wide friend group, I'd say. I get along with pretty much everybody because I'm, I'm a part-time specialist, part-time receiver. Um, I get along with QBs because I played QB back in the day. Um, so I think that I probably spend my most time with my housemates, which is actually uh, an offensive lineman, uh, Jim Onulak and Nick Crimmin. Um, so those guys live with me. And then I'm eating Diesel and Dukes. I have Diesel and Dukes and five That's guys. That's the third Corsac time. Is talking about That's it. That's the third Everybody's time. Everybody's been talking about Diesel so and Dukes. So good. Yeah. You got to get the breakfast burger. Oh, man. And you oh. said it's on Easton, and right, Chris? Yeah. Huh? It's on Easton? It's on Easton. Yeah. Yep. I, I saw it the other day for the first time. A um, couple of the other tweets. You're trying to get Carly Lloyd down here to, to yeah, try to practice. Yeah, she was wearing your shirt. we got to get that connected. So, wait, what's going on with that? So, here's the deal. He tweeted at Carly Lloyd, what are the chances you want to come down and get some extra kicking work with your very own Rut Rutgers specialist, being the ever-so-talented ever snapper Billy Taylor? It would be an honor to lay down some angelic holds for you. Yeah. What do you say? After Carly, of course, 
down in Philadelphia, uh, nailed a 55-yard right. field goal right. into the small uprights, the practice uprights. Yeah, those, those that Alvar, I'm, I mean, that's very impressive, I'm sure. If she has some time, we'll come back home. Yeah, I know she's busy. I know she's she's pretty no, busy. No, we, we should really try to make that happen. I'll re- retweet it to her and then tag yeah. her in it. I, I will read one more. Um, these angelic hands will be a Netflix original if ESPN doesn't jump on this. Yeah. So have you already <laughs> named your movie These Angelic Hands? Yeah. There's yeah. been a few speculations out there. There's another account that uh, is all about Adam Korzak originally, but they said that there's going to be a Netflix series about basket weaving, underwater basket weaving, <laughs> um, that I'm going to be the, the host for. So. Uh, I didn't do that guy with you. You sound like the, you know, the fake Andrew Luck uh, Twitter? Yeah. It sounds like you're yeah. on your way towards Dearest that one. mother. Dearest <laughs> mother. It sounds like you're on the way. When you read that first tweet, Chris, that's what I went to right away. How does a kid, fr- is it pronounced Olathe? Yeah, Olathe. Olathe. Yeah, see, I had to put that one out there, too, because even then, I guess I didn't uh, make it clear enough. No, but I, you know what? I, I think I, asked, I actually asked you last year yeah. when we were going to Kansas. Right. To play at Kansas because it's what about an hour from where Lawrence is roughly? Yeah, yeah, it's just right down K10 for me. So that's about yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. So, but your parents mm-hmm. come to every game. Every game every, from Kansas, not yeah. from New Jersey. They'll be they'll be there this weekend in Ann Arbor. As so, well. how does a kid from Olathe, Kansas, by way of Coffeeville Community College, mm-hmm. end up at Rutgers? Well, I'll tell you, I got I got lucky enough to uh, strike a deal with my head coach at Coffeeville and told him. Um, any head coaches that come in, just let me introduce myself and tell them that, you know, I have these aspirations uh, of going D1. And one day, Coach Blazik, former O-line coach here, came in, and he had actually tried to recruit me uh, out of high school to go to Western Illinois. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I thought that I was more talented than that, not to, you know, toot my own horn, but I thought that, you know, I've been, I've been determined to make it to the Division One level. And so I, I took my opportunity up here, a month into it, tear my ACL. So... Mm. Came back from that, but now, you know, I've been blessed enough to re- receive a scholarship from Coach Ash, and, you know, everybody kind of accepted me. Moving 19 hours away wasn't easy at the beginning, but <laughs> it's become home now, so. Well, I, I was asked for people that aren't from New Jersey, and I better not get the same answer about these trees, but what is the difference between Kansas and New Jersey? Uh, well, I can tell you the biggest three that shocked me whenever I came up here was First off, not being able to turn left on highways <laughs> was like, was like the jug handles. Yeah, the jug True. handles threw me for a loop. Um, walking to morning classes, nobody's really um, in a good mood to say good morning yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Welcome to New Jersey. I had a lot of energy in the morning, and I guess not a lot of people did. A lot, not a lot of people are morning, especially people. in a public speaking class, I guess. But <laughs> and then. Uh, Chocolate milk. I mean, obviously we have enough at the hail, but when I wanted to go home and have chocolate milk, I tried to buy them from grocery stores, and they were out a lot of the time. But Kansas, I mean, obviously we got plenty of cows. So. Well, they were out of chocolate, chocolate milk, milk here? Yeah. yeah. Son, you're not going to the right places. I, about to say, I've never I know. Where, where are you getting it in bulk? I mean, in bulk. Well, I mean, Costco, they got to have it in bulk there. Right? I went to Sam's Club, and they didn't have it. Costco. I know, maybe Costco. I need to go to Costco. Maybe I need to switch over. Um, I wanted to ask you about Coffeeville, just from this standpoint, you, uh, uh, last chance you, because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everybody asks you about this. Yeah. And um, I, don't th- I don't think you were there when Jason Brown was coaching. I was there. You were? Yeah, my, okay. uh, my freshman year. For those who haven't seen it, the Netflix series, Last Chance You, which is all about junior college football. They started with East Mississippi for <laughs> two years. And then they uh, took on independence in Kansas right. uh, for two years. And Jason Brown is the coach. And to say he's polarizing would be <laughs> yes. uh, underselling it. Was, first of all, is junior college football accurately depicted there as a whole? I would that say that that's, the, that's pretty toned down. Um, going through JUCO, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that people wouldn't even believe. I have so many stories. Mm. Um, but I'd say that you know, it depicts it enough to where people are going, wow, this is... This is crazy. And the amount of talent that actually comes through. I was just thinking back on it the other day that when I was playing QB my freshman year there, every single one of those guys, all, th- all three of them are in the NFL now. Wow. Well, yeah. Who are they? It's uh, Cedric Wilson, yep. uh, Jawan Winfrey, and Terry Wright. And they played at Colorado, Boise State, and uh, Purdue, actually. Wow. And so. as you said to friends, I was actually wondering about, yeah. do you stay, when you go to the junior college route, everyone's goal is to get to the Division yeah. I school. Do you still maintain a friendship with some of those guys? That oh you yeah, develop over yeah. The year? I've got I've got group chats for days with those guys. I've got yeah. group chats with every different every different inside joke that we had when we were there. I actually 
I, somehow we managed to live on the girl side of the dorms. <laughs> they, it's amazing how yeah, that happens. It's just, <laughs> it was terrible, I know. But uh, <laughs> we had our own bathroom, which was better than sharing the community bathroom. But, but it, it was a ride. And, uh, you know, you can't wait to get out of there. And then once you leave, you're like, man, I kind of miss some of the things that go on. But mm -hmm. so fortunate to be in, like, the facilities that we have here. It's, it's night and day. Did you, was he a nut in your game? So he was, remember. he, his first year there was my sophomore year. Okay. And uh, that's when they changed the rule about out-of-state players. Because when, when I first got there, you could only have 20 out-of-state players. And the rest were, had to be from Kansas. Right. Yeah. But you could redshirt however many. Because there, it seemed like there was unlimited scholarships. I don't know how we would bring in so many guys. And uh, that second year, they changed the rule. He must have had every single bounce back there was known to man. And they actually, they beat us that year. Um, which was a complete turnaround. The year before, we beat him 88 to 21. Wow. So. 88 to 21. <laughs> Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, you got to check out that Netflix series. It's, yeah. It's, it's say, great intense. Show. Great show. Intense. Yeah. I like it a lot. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, I got two last ones for yeah. you. Number one, you're a finance major. Yeah. Um, so just tell me about that. What are you thinking about for your career outside yeah. of football? So in terms of my career, I've actually kind of uh, – veered away from more of like the investment side than banking side. Obviously, I grew up around financial advising. My dad's a financial advisor. And so that's always kind of been in, in the back of my mind. Um, nobody really in the beginning of their career in financial advising, not a lot of um, well-established people are going to trust the 22-year-old that just got out of a football team. But so I've kind of um, ventured into the path of a sales role or a development role. Um, I've been looking into companies that have more of these uh, developmental roles and that's kind of the path that I'm going down I want to be able to understand a business throughout so that one day either, either I start my own business or I take over a business do you want to live here do you have a, a preference or is it kind of go anywhere yeah so in terms of uh, the long-term goal I would say that I want to end up in Nashville um, I've got some family there I love the I love the country music scene there um, actually took my girlfriend there this this past summer and we had a great time two-stepping and all of that and uh, but right now, I think that if you can make it up in Jersey, you'll be much better off than if you try to move away right away. So, Last one. Can a holder get drafted? I don't know. I don't know if uh, Coach Ash will let me do pro day with just an H on my back, but we're going to look into it. See, that would be with awesome. Just H on the back. <laughs> Guys, you really have to look at him. He's got special angelic holds yeah. that – you won't regret drafting. <laughs> we'll find out. Awesome. I, I tell you what, Cole, it, it, you know, having the, the personality that you do, it's uh, great to have you with us. We appreciate the time. Yeah, I appreciate and it. we are pushing for you to win the Mortel Award this awesome. year. you got to win be great. it, man. got to win it. Again, epic. go follow on Twitter, at Mortel Award, M-O-R-T-E-L-L, -L, and start putting in your vote for Cole Murphy, yeah. hashtag Angelic Holmes. Yeah. It, so how my, do you want people to, to do that? Yeah, Make think, it specific. I think that uh, you know, if you were to shout out both the Mort at Mortel Award, and then you'd have to obviously tag me in that. And my at is uh, at Cole underscore Murphy underscore 10. I'm putting out content about these holds all the time. So um, if you've got a pretty good sense of humor and it's a little twisted or – As we just demonstrated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you like that kind of stuff, just go, go ahead and shout that out, and we can try to get this ball moving. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And it, listen, it is moving a little bit. Yeah, I it think so. It is moving a little I bit. So. Hashtag Angelic Holt. Yep. We will make sure we mention it on the broadcast <laughs> this week, too. Awesome. Cole, great stuff. Thanks awesome. for coming by. Thank you. Thank you. Cole Murphy joining us on this week's edition of the Chris Ash Show. The coach will rejoin us momentarily at the Rutgers Club down here on the Livingston campus of Rutgers University. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Chris Ash Show. It's after hours. You're stuck at work. You're feeling lousy. There are those times when you need to see a doctor, but you just can't get there. So what do you do? Where do you go? You go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Telemed app, and you get to see the doctor right away, whenever you want, wherever you are, on whatever device you choose. It's that simple and that convenient. No appointment necessary for access to doctors who all meet our high standards. In fact, you can even see physician profiles and read about doctors who fit your needs and match your symptoms. But most importantly, you get a diagnosis when you need it, where you want it, 24-7. Download Telemed from RWJ Barnabas Health at the App Store or visit rwjbh.org slash telemed. Now you can see the doctor, even when you can't go to the doctor. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. 
This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. We depend on our drinking water supply daily, but where does that water come from? Your water provider encourages you to get to know your local water source so together we can protect and preserve it. The investments we make as a community to protect our water source now ensure we have a sustainable drinking water supply for the future. Visit drinktap.org to learn more. This message is brought to you by the American Water Works Association and your local water provider. SHI helps companies select, deploy, and manage cutting-edge technology. Find out how by visiting SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. We have returned to the Rutgers Club for this week's edition of the Chris Ash Show. Rutgers getting set to take on Michigan this coming Saturday at the Big House up in Ann Arbor. 12 noon kick on BTN. Uh, Coach, as you look at Jim Harbaugh's team, they had a rough one last week out at Wisconsin. Uh, what do you see with his team? You know, typical Michigan team. Um, they're big, they're fast, um, physical football team. You know, uh, you know, Wisconsin was the better team last Saturday, but uh, we expect to, to get Michigan's best here. It's conference play. It's divisional conference play, I should say. And uh, they'll be at home and um, always tough to beat there at home. And what's that stadium like? Because you've been there a few, quite a few times. When you go in there and take the scene, it's a... 110,000 people yelling at you in that maze and blue. So what is that stadium like walking into it? Well, it's like, you know, most stadiums here in the Big Ten. It's a great venue, and uh, the Big Ten has a ton of great venues. And, you know, uh, you know our, our players uh, are, are, have been around long enough now. We've been in the Big Ten long enough, been at every, basically every stadium. Uh, they're not wowed by anything, you know, so to speak. But uh, it is a great venue, and uh, it's always uh, – it is one of the best uh, historic uh, stadiums in, in college football. And, you know, I'm sure it'll be jam-packed and uh, full house on uh, Saturday, too. And it, this is a matchup between two universities that are two of the three oldest in terms of playing college football. Of course, Rutgers, the 150th anniversary this year, the birthplace of college football in Michigan, uh, not too far behind. They have been playing for 140 years, and I believe Rutgers has played 14 or 15 more games than Michigan uh, overall, so this is not just that, but a historic matchup. I believe they're doing some sort of uh, 150th anniversary uh, celebration this weekend up in Ann Arbor. Uh, you know, you talk about them being big, physical, fast, uh, defensive side. What jumps out to you about Michigan? Yeah, it's just that. Um, yeah. You know, it starts up front with their defensive line. Um, they take a lot of pride in their pass rush and being disruptive, and you know, playing in the offense's backfield. And uh, they're going to play a lot of tight man to, to man coverage. And that's, uh, you know, what they have done for a while, and uh, they do it really well, and this year's no different. And how have you seen on the offensive side? I know Shea Patterson had a little bit of a rough week last week, but as they look to bounce back this week, what do you see coming from that offensive side? You know, a lot of threats, you know, uh, whether it's uh, the, the quarterback, um, the receivers, running backs, you know, got a big veteran uh, offensive line. That's really where it starts. I mean, they're a pretty impressive offensive line. They got a lot of guys that have played, and, um, you know, they've got uh, some good skill around them. So, um, you know, it, again, it's, it's going to be a, uh, a, a great test for us. It's going to be a, a very good football team that we're going to go play, and, um, and it's always tough to play on the road in the Big Ten. BTN Tailgate will also be on hand. Their coverage is going to start at 10 a.m. Uh, live from Michigan for this game between the Scarlet Knights and the Wolverines. We'll take one more time out. More to do on the Chris Ash Show. Stay with us from Learfield IMG College. Your bank records are secure, your first grader can write code, your package is being delivered, and your driver is one minute away. As technology enhances our everyday lives, SHI International ensures the schools and businesses developing new technologies have the tools and expertise they need to compete and win in the ever-changing global marketplace. Find out how SHI supports the business and technical needs of more than 20,000 of the world's most complex IT organizations by visiting SHI.com. That's SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. Cold? 
cough, flu symptoms? Sounds like you should see a doctor. So where do you go? You go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Telemed app and you get to see the doctor right away, whenever you want, on whatever device you choose. It's that simple and that convenient. No appointment necessary. Download Telemed from RWJ Barnabas Health at the App Store or visit rwjbh.org slash telemed. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Millions plan for retirement online, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, and manage your benefits all from the comfort of your home and give yourself the freedom to do what you want offline. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. A couple of minutes left for the Chris Ash Show. Rutgers in Michigan this Saturday, 12 noon on BTN, and of course on the Rutgers Radio Network. That's WCTC 1450, WOR 710, and then down in Atlantic City, 97.3 WENJ and WNJE 920 as well. The game will be on Sirius 211 XM 201, and we will begin our coverage at 11 a.m., with Rutgers countdown to kickoff. So coach, uh, you're a quarter of the way through the regular season. Uh, at this point, you're looking forward now to Michigan. What are the things that this week in particular you're gonna feel particularly good about in terms of your team's improvement if you see it on Saturday? Yeah, again, we, I, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier about our focus this week. I wanna see our focus show up on Saturday. Uh, that we go out and we play a, a clean football game. Not a perfect game, because that, that, that doesn't happen. Uh, but a, a cleaner football game. Uh, we don't do the things that we've been doing that beat ourselves with penalty or ball security or penalties and ball security or, or you know, things like that. Um, I want to see us go compete. You know, I, I told the team the other day, what I want is a team that uh, plays really hard, plays physical, um, embraces competition, and uh, doesn't beat itself. And if we do that, you know, the, the re results will take care of themselves. And... Uh, uh, that's our focus in, in our preparation. It has been. Uh, it has been this week, and I want to see that on Saturday. And can you talk a little bit about how turnovers will be a big play also in this game, trying to cause some turnovers, get the offense a short field? Yeah, you know, turnovers are always a, a factor in games, um, whether you have them or, or you, you take the ball away. Uh, that's probably one area that I'm really disappointed in uh, right now with our football team is we have not taken the ball away enough. Um, it's been a major emphasis uh, for us since last spring. And uh, we're not getting uh, the results uh, based on the investment that we're making with that. And we've got to do a better job of that. And this Saturday would be a great Saturday to get that going. Coach, we will see you up in Ann Arbor on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Yep. Thank you, guys. I always appreciate uh, this uh, night here on Wednesday. And it's a great new venue. And looking forward to it next week. We want to thank everybody from the Rutgers Club. What a great job Nick Emanuel and his crew have done to make us feel welcome. And we encourage fans to come out and join us each and every week, every Wednesday night here at the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus uh, of Rutgers University. It is a beautiful facility and we will be here uh, for the rest of the year every Wednesday night. I want to thank Colin Osborne as usual and Mark Sell for helping us get the job done on our vision on scarletknights.com and of course on the Scarlet Knights app, our producer and engineer on site, Paul Schrager, and back in our Rutgers IMG Sports Network studios, our, our guy John Essek. So for our entire crew, this is Chris Carlin speaking, reminding you it's Rutgers and Michigan. Saturday at noon, we'll see you then. Have a good week, everybody. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. You've been listening to The Chris Ash Show on the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Tonight's show has been brought to you by...
The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Rutgers Sports Network. Sports Network.